Tonight on Enough Said with KFAN Radio's Dan Barrero. What have you done today to make Adrian Peterson feel a little less uneasy about returning to this market and the Minnesota Vikings? Well, let's just give them what they want. That's what we do. We give them, we all go belly up in the end. We know how to build stadiums. That's practically all we know how to do in sport. We don't know how to win. Attorney and HoldingCourtPodcast.com's Ron Rosenbaum. This has been like a continuing painful episode of the Three Stooges. I don't even get it. First of all, I don't know why they put cameras in phones. When I was growing up, growing up it was kind of odd. Phones actually were to talk to, to talk people. To people. Yeah. And executive producer Lori Fisher, who's keeping these guys on track and deciding when enough is said. Well, End of I story. I okay, in enough this said case, with that. Should... You know, Ron, uh, it's now official. The commissioner has declared Adrian Peterson, your guy, eligible for My guy. participation in the National Football League. And so I ask you, what have you done today to make Adrian Peterson feel a little less uneasy about returning to this market and the Minnesota Vikings? Well, this has been like a continuing painful episode of the Three Stooges. But the problem is everybody's switching roles. You've got AP who started the game off with a minor problem taking a switch to his kid. Didn't realize, of course, in the year 2014, that might not be appropriate. Then the Vikings respond, you know, it ain't that big of a deal. They, they fixed well, it. They, they will suspend him for one game. Pitchfork Nation comes forward. Then they suspend him. But now in the third act, we've got the agent acting like he's got a hand of four aces. He doesn't even have two deuces. You tell me, Mr. Sports Expert, <laughs> why don't the Vikings simply say, you're under well, contract, have. you're getting $12 million a year, go find it somewhere they else. Have. They've done exactly that. I know you're offended they took the trip down to Texas. Well, yeah, that's Dan, just they took it with knee pads going to his mansion. No, it was that's embarrassing. Just them playing the game in case somebody is stupid enough to give them a Herschel Walker-like offer. they got to play that game. But I think since then they've played it perfectly. Either you want, you want to play football, Adrian, or you want to miss your second consecutive year. It's up to you. We're going to pay you th- almost $13 million a year. You want to sit? Go right ahead. I think the Vikings now have played this very well, and I think Adrian knows he's, he, he's got no place to go at well, this well, point. What is his agent saying? I, I don't really think Minnesota's the best place for him. Well, what, is he going to go somewhere else and they're going to pay him $12 million? I know he's brilliant. I know he's talented. Well, Dan... I don't think anybody but a football team is going to pay him $12 million. Aren't the Vikings the only team that can pay him that much? That's true. I wanted to interrupt you guys and sure. show a tweet. Last night, AP put out, God's undeniable will. It's been favorited ma- millions of times since last night. What do you think? I, I, I mean, w- w- was it God's will for him to take a switch to his kid? Yes, I, I just, God, honestly, God I, acted in very strange ways. I'm not sure what that has to do with it. I don't even, Adrian. What does that mean, undeniable? I mean, it, it's, it, 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 he, there, there are times he still doesn't get it, Ron. He still doesn't get it when he wonders why maybe some people in the organization didn't have his back. It's because of what he did, his conduct. And to this day, I don't I'm not at all convinced he gets that he started, as you mentioned, this entire process. He remains not the victim. He was the perpetrator at the front end. And then when people are ready to move on, what happens? He says, I don't know if I feel real comfortable in this environment, whether the team has had my back. They well, had every reason I, to not I, I have, mean, it, I totally have his back. Agree with you. It, it's not like the Vikings started this problem. Somebody ought to tell them, you know, the best thing you can do is not beat the hell out of your kid. And if so, don't act like you're the victim. But isn't that America today? Doesn't everybody okay. want to be a victim? Well, it'll all change. Enough said it on, on AP. I'm sure we'll be talking about it every Forever. week. Let's sure. move on to the soccer stadium. Minnesota gets a professional soccer team in 2018. They want to build a stadium near the Minneapolis Farmers Market. And now the owners of Minnesota United asking for tax breaks to help build the stadium. Dan? I'm shocked (laughs) that 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 the governor, after all the tough talk, as recently as I think like four days ago, has suddenly said, well, there's a couple of tax breaks I might not mind. We might be okay if the percentages are so little on a $150 million stadium. Let's face it. They're going to get, let's just give them what they want. That's what we do. We give them, we all go belly up in the end. We know how to build stadiums. That's practically all we know how to do in sport. We don't know how to win, but we know how to build stadiums. And as I, as I pointed out before, the, the, the beautiful thing is the commissioner of this league comes in, the day he announces they're coming, the league is coming, says, 
better have a deal by July 1. And we've got other cities that have their infrastructure in place. They know how to play us because we always cave, right? Well, in, in due respect to Governor Dayton, if you remember, he's the guy says, not going to be any seat licenses in this Viking stadium on my, oh, well, I really didn't have time to, to fine print. read the bill, but I'll do it. But you have to admit, if there's three more deserving people for a federal <laughs> or a state grant, it would be Dr. William McGuire, who made hundreds of million dollars off your health, by the way. Carl Polad, who we built a stadium for, but obviously that's enough. And then Glenn Taylor, who may be running the worst franchise <laughs> in the history of the planet. We got our pockets picked by Ziggy Wilf. Last time I looked, that was a billion. Though this is only this is only several million. Is so it, we, it won't feel as bad, will I, it? I mean, you know we're going to do it, but I'm sorry. When Ziggy Wilf gets a stadium without putting a dime in on day one, seat well, license. Well, he's going to give some of that money back. Have to put. And he's going to kill a bunch of birds, apparently. Well, okay, let's move on to ESPN reporter Britt McHenry who went off on a cashier over some charges over her car. Let's take a listen. That's a huge talker right now. Do you feel good about your job? So I could be a college dropout and do the same thing? Why have to drive a brain and you don't? Looks like it. Maybe if I was missing some teeth, they would hire me home. Yeah, I could do it if you had to touch your fruit cup a little bit. Oh, like yours? Well, they look so stunning. Because yeah. I'm on television and you're on trailer honey nice. lose some weight baby yeah. girl <laughs> where do we begin i mean if i mean this is tailor made for pitchfork nation and frankly in this case ron i can't even blame we want pitchfork the pitchfork nation. Marks, we want right? to carry one or two of them i mean i think the worst job in america might be to be on the wrong side of the glass at an impound lot because everybody's by definition Annoyed, well, nobody comes angry. there with a good mood. Uh, generally okay. not. Yes. And they, okay. most people don't say, yeah, you're right. I, I deserve to be towed. And is it 800 bucks? Sure, no problem. But when you up the ante and turn it into a who am I and who are you, that's, that's about as evil as you could get. In fact, I began to think as it's playing out that this is an onion thing where it was almost too rich to believe that somebody would be stupid enough or arrogant enough to go as far as she well, did. Well, I mean, let's be honest. Th th this is as humiliating a way as you can talk to me. I'm pretty, you're ugly, I have <laughs> teeth, you don't I have, have a teeth. degree. I have a college degree, I work for ESPN, you're nothing. I'll tell you one thing, if I'm ESPN, how do you put her back They suspended on her. Yeah, They're right suspending her. Let, let's point Spend out, she, she did apologize. Let's put up her tweet. Yesterday oh, she did say, I'm sorry for my actions. My emotions got the best of me. Apologizal 101. I mean, that's that's in the that's from the corporate handbook. You've well, got then, to apologize. Well, that's the PR guy yeah, who said you apologize. Yeah. I mean, do you really think she's sorry? No. I have teeth. Has, you don't no have chance. teeth. I'm beautiful. That, you're ugly. I'm thin. You're fat fire i don't want to see her but I you know she what be fired. she won't get fired but the i think what the employer has to worry about is whether she can ever get past it and it does say the problem with this is is it a mistake this i think speaks to your sensibility you does think? it not well beyond the old well i was a little annoyed and i said it because you can go you can have those back and forth but this is a whole different level i don't think you know pitchfork nation wants everybody to always go away i don't think she has to be fired but what the 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 I, you, I guess you could say that the or the employer has to worry about is will be she she be taken seriously? Well, I, first of all, I would fire. I don't think you talk to people that way. I don't want somebody like that on my air. There's but a lot you know of somebody like TV, Drew Ron. Pinsky is going to come on the air <laughs> and say this is addiction. This isn't really her talking. This is the drugs. I'm sorry. She should be gone. Okay, enough said. You know, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who've said the same thing. They just haven't had a camera there. That's the dirty little secret. Who is a just an innocent child? Please release him. Let him go. Say him to his parents. We miss him. Don't do him no harm. Pretty much chilling video right there, Ron, where we've got a 10-year-old boy who goes missing and it's everybody's worst nightmare, the idea of a child being abducted and then murdered. And then we add the element of the allegation that it wasn't a stranger who did it, but it was a parent, in this case, a father. It, it's beyond comprehension, I think, for most people, especially when you factor in the allegation that it may be related to insurance policies, 
other grievances That's for money. For money, basically, adds another layer beyond stories we've heard where it's I heard voices and I I had to take my children with me, whatever. This is as incomprehensible a story, I think, for most of us as we've had around here in a long time. Well, you, I'm not going to say we normally see them, but you're much more, it's much more common where maybe a, a, a woman's boyfriend does something to her kids or whatever. This goes against nature, it goes against evolution, assuming it's true, we're assuming he did it. Right. But um, I want to approach a different angle, and that's that people have really been down on the police because of what happened in uh, North Charleston. North Charleston what happened in Tulsa, but this police chief of Crystal, who took a lot of heat, why Early, aren't you right. doing more searching? Why aren't you doing more things? Why haven't you charged this guy? She handled this exactly right. The police had information we didn't. They were not going to charge until they found the body. Once they found the body, they charged. They did an incredible job of investigation. And while we love to rip the police, at some point, you got to give credit where credit is yeah, due. Yeah, it's a good point, and it's sometimes deliberate works better. And you had the the possibility they're also building a case as Pierre is doing various interviews, which he's almost forced to do in this situation as a father. How does he say, "I don't want to talk"? Uh, that adds to some suspicion, but he ends up conflicting himself and. You need time for that to take place, and that's obviously worked to the advantage of the authorities to say, let's bide our time here before we get to that, and obviously also finding a body. Well, you I, have a an, I have another soundbite, though, for you guys on that. He went on Nancy Grace, a national cable show, and talked about that polygraph test that they said he wasn't necessarily being truthful. Let's listen to that and then get your response on the back end. Yes, I didn't know. So, a question they asked me maybe another way, but it was the second day when my son got missing. So I was very emotional and I wasn't by myself. I wasn't to myself when I did that polygraph. All right. Well, first of all, polygraphs are often used by the police to try to clear somebody. They're not as scientific as people think. They're not admissible in court. But this is a textbook example of why attorneys tell their clients, don't talk publicly or to the police. But Dan, he was in a rather difficult position. Kind of hard to say, I'm not talking to the police, but go find my kid. And he had so no choice. This guy really, I think, to the extent that we believe he's guilty, really cut his own throat. This, to this point, is seems to be a very circumstantial case, although it's a technological case, as you've pointed out, in terms of pings and where he was with the cell phone. Is it likely that there also that there might be even a bigger piece of evidence that? authorities are, are holding back on the basis of the way they have kind of been deliberate through this process. Well, a lot of the news media, people have said, well, this is what you got, and they've right. read the complaint. The complaint is somewhat detailed, but only has to pass probable cause. You can bet not only do the police have more, they may end up with DNA, which could be critical, and don't bet your life they're not going to be witnesses. I, it's, I it's, think they've done an outstanding job. It's just an incredibly sad story. Let's move on to last November, Rolling Stone published an article about an alleged rape at the University of Virginia a fraternity there. It turns out the, fat, the details that were reported couldn't have happened the way they were reported, and yet no one at Rolling Stone got fired for the work they did. I know you have a lot to say about that. Dan? Well, you know, uh, Woodward and Bernstein became two of the most famous journalists of all time through Watergate, and one of their big mantras was get at least two sources if we're going to report a piece of information. Rolling Stone went with one source. Their source was the alleged sexual assault victim, a horrific story. These things are happening on campus, important stories. But if you're going to make this one as big as they did, you cannot possibly report only on the basis of what she tells you without checking out any of it. And they didn't check out any of it. They went with it. They got more hits than they ever have. And now they're saying, well, yeah, we might have done a bad job, but we're retracting it. Yet not one person, you know, we talked earlier in the show about a person saying something pretty vile uh, in an impound line. And I advocated them being fired. Yeah, them being fired. No one is being fired or suspended in this case. And you tell me, given the DEFCON 1 they went to at the University of Virginia, fraternity shut down for a while, everybody assuming the worst in this situation, that nobody is going to lose their job? It's absurd. Well, part of this is what's happened to journalism today. Get it first. Get it quicker. If you get it right, that's fine. If you don't get it right, we'll move on. Don't forget with Woodward and Birdseed. They had an editor, Ben Bradley, who said, Legendary. I don't want to put a story 
on the Washington Post site or on the, in the newspaper, unless I have two solid sources, they were criticized in it those days Absolutely. for only having two. two. Now, you don't need anybody. And the claim that we did this to protect the victim, how much did they help the victim and how much did they hurt the University of Virginia? Let's go to a tweet. John Winger says, your reckless reporting ruined the lives of young men who did nothing wrong and no one got fired. Wow. Well, it, the one thing I would say to that, we don't know if people did something wrong or not. No. The problem with this story is we don't know exactly whether it happened or whether it didn't happen. We do know one thing, you can't do it this way. And why Jan Winner didn't fire the fact checker, the reporter, the editor, they liked, it's lost they, on me. They, they, the story was so rich, they wanted the story. They didn't even bother to talk to the friends that she went to after the fact. And if they'd even done that, forget giving the, the alleged perpetrator a chance to speak, it would have started to unravel. They didn't want it to unravel, Ron. They wanted, they knew they had an incredibly detailed, painful story that was gonna get international attention it did, and they said, let's not mess with it. Let's just go with it, and we'll also always hide behind the we're trying to protect the victim in this case. They did all rape victims a disservice in this case because some people are going to take out of this stuff never happens. No, it does happen, and that's why it's important to get the story right. Yeah, and, and that's really a great point. And in some ways, aren't we all the victim to the extent that people Absolutely. don't believe in journalism anymore? And you see the numbers, Dan. People who fifteen percent okay, believe okay, the guys, news media. Enough said with this one. Let's end it with Sam, Sam or Scott Simon with NPR tweets. Man in airport asked me, "Do you want your daughters to go into journalism or work for Rolling Stone?" <laughs> Let's end it there. Up next. That should be easy. Up question. next, are we obsessed with ourselves, guys? Selfies, anyone? Do you take selfies? I wouldn't. I can't wait. Can we? I hope we can do it next. <laughs> have second. you ever taken a selfie? Uh, yeah, I have with my daughter. Is that bad? Well, it's not good. Well, I haven't well, broadcasted it all over America. America. With your daughter. I, just, yeah, then I, mean, it, I, I mean, love my daughter. I mean, it, I just want to. Ron, I hold in my hand here what they tell me is a selfie stick. I don't know how far this extends, but I have a question for you as we talk about that very controversial subject that a lot of people wouldn't touch. When did people become such self-absorbed morons where they not only have to go to a place where tragedy has taken place, as did in New York a while ago when a couple of buildings came down because of a natural gas explosion, but they must, in the foreground, pose with big smiles plastered on their faces while they show in the background said destruction. Where, where does that level of self-absorption and moronity, to make up a word that doesn't exist, come from? Well, I, I don't even get it. First of all, I don't know why they put cameras in phones. When I was growing up, growing up it was kind of odd. Phones actually were to talk to, to talk people. To people. Yeah, well, I mean, that obviously that's, that's, that's past way old you're, you're school. You're old there. But I've seen some of the most bizarre pictures, Dan, where there's like buildings burning, people in danger, and people standing in front with a selfie. I, I mean, it's one thing, you know, and, we, and listen, it wasn't always pretty when stand-up reporters sometimes stood in no, front of right. scenes to do it. But at least yeah, they were doing covering the theoretically news. journalism. Well, I don't get it, but I don't get the whole deal. You saw this thing in Florida. We've got a rape, a, a sexual assault Panama going City. on. Right. A zillion people standing around, of course, doing nothing. And, and people, taping it. And taping it. And other people standing, s taking selfies. Well, I don't get here's it. Well, the, here's the good news. The good news is a number, I think some people are starting to get it, because a number of big-time cultural outlets like the Smithsonian, some art galleries, and the, your favorite, the Kentucky Derby, they're claiming they're going to ban <laughs> selfies. Now, how that's going to go, I don't know. But this happened to me at the All-Star Game, where there's, there were some people down below. There was a guy who wanted, it wasn't good enough to chronicle the event on his phone. <laughs> or It had to be on his iPad. Yeah. And he had a selfie stick like this. A little wider. So he's blocking he your it. view. So he's blocking everybody's view yeah. just so he can get a better angle. How about this idea? Just watch the game or look at the Mona Lisa's well, see, that's odd old smile school. and enjoy it rather than you always have to chronicle it with photos and you got to be in them. That's self-absorption taken to the last step. Ron, do you know where the number step. one place is to take a selfie, Ron? Um, I, I would guess the Eiffel okay, Tower here. only because I've heard this before from Dan <laughs> Barrero. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have guessed some place like that. The Coliseum, whatever. I, have you ever Blue taken a selfie? With my my daughter, that's it. I but, have one for Dan. Who has a book out with 300 selfies of herself out right now? Well, 
That sounds low, but I'll say the Kardashians. Yeah. Got to be, but it seems like it'd be well, low. That's I'm shocked that that's low. What, what, it what seems is, like it'd be what, in the thousands What is by with now? her obsession with herself? I mean, we're all a little She's obsessed a with ourselves. I shouldn't it's even working. have brought it up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's move on to the lightning round. Quick questions, tight answers, go. Let's see here. Former Twins pitcher and current um, analyst Bert Blylevin apologizes for trashing Detroit in a tweet, said the cityscape was ugly. Should he have said he was sorry? Oh, no, not that. Anything but that. Something that's uttered out loud how many times a day, why, Ron? Why do we have to apologize for everything? If I stand there and say the Detroit skyline is ugly, which, by the way, it is. It ain't pretty. Not only uh, do I have to apologize, the whole organization has to apologize. Well, that was the I'm bigger rip. I'm tired of it. The Ron. bigger rip was the organization feeling... I hope, Chan I hope Nine doesn't ever have to feel like they got to distance themselves from what we say. They may be apologizing may for this well, already. There is that Ron, it's, uh, Minnesota native Tyus Jones, one and done. He's going into the NBA draft, just one year at Duke. A wise decision? Well, I, yeah, I think it is a wise decision. He and Okafor were going to go in together. They can't do more than they've done, Dan. They won the national championship. He was the MVP. He's one of uh, us, too, of, you know. Pardon me? He's one of us. Yeah, that, well, he's a Minnesota guy. Isn't he That's from right. Apple Valley? He's close enough, yeah. But okay. you got to admit, he's a hell of a ball player. He's not going to make that much more money if he waits, so it, it, was, a, it was a smart move Don't on his think? part. He's, yeah, he's ready. Next up, Dan. Hillary Clinton and Florida Senator Marco Rubio both announcing this week they're running for president. Does it just seem election season has just started way too early? Well, first of all, I'm shocked uh, that Hillary's running. Hillary's Especially running? Because I had no idea. Everybody Are you ran breaking that breaking story now? News, which yeah. seems amazing. I think we all suffer from that fatigue, but it's two, it's two kinds of fatigue. It's how long the season goes, and it's the familiar faces. It's the two dynasties, the Bush dynasty and the Clinton dynasty. I think there's as much fatigue, at least for me, over that as there is that this thing goes on and on, and cable news outlets, they're going to cover it the Bushes, ad nauseum. The Bushes, by the way, have broken the Hopsburgs record <laughs> for continuous That's our rating. royalty. Okay, uh, la last up, Billy Joel, the piano man, being a, he's going to be a daddy a second time. He's 65 years old. Dan. Well, I, I'm not going to, I mean, I, I, am I supposed to rip him? Yes. I had a kid, I mean, I was I'd 56 when, uh, when my daughter was born, so... Good for him, I say. Some people think it's selfish to have kids late. I do. Because they say you're not going to be around. Well, first of all, maybe we are going to be around. And secondly, who's to say you can't? Tony Randall had, I think, two or three of them when yeah. he was 95. How did that work out? Well, he died shortly <laughs> thereafter. Well, well on that note, that's, sure. that's enough said. Nice work, guys. See, that? I mean, that's exactly it's the not, point. Why do people care? To see when they're teenagers.